Empowerment through knowledge publishing and Serena Stone present the Tequila Drinker's Guide to Health and Wellness Radio Hour with your host, author and medical Qigong educator, Serena Stone. Featuring the director of the Universal Healing Tao and author of dozens of books on natural health and longevity, Tao Master Montauk Chia. This show is for all of us who work hard and play hard. Those of us who are willing to try new things to improve their life and those who will not tolerate victimization as an answer to health and wellness issues. And now, the Tequila Drinker's Guide to Health and Wellness, episode number one. Who is Tao Master Montauk Chia? On today's episode, an amazing man and the star of our podcast, Dao Master Montak Chia begins to demystify ancient Chinese secrets of health and longevity. An award-winning health and wellness, Qigong, and meditation expert, he is the founder of the Universal Healing Dao Qigong School and has certified over 3,000 Qigong meditation instructors worldwide. Get to know this unusual man in this uncensored, series of podcasts. Today's trivia is from Tao Yoga, T-A-O, yoga, dot C-O, dot U-K. Fact. Qi, translated from Chinese, is energy. Fact. Gong, translated from Chinese, is work. Fact. Tao, or Taoism, is a Chinese philosophy based on the way of nature or the way without force. Fact. World-famous Taoist Qigong master Mantak Chia was born in Thailand to Chinese parents in 1944. When he was six years old, Buddhist monks taught him how to sit and still the mind. As a boy, he learned traditional Thai boxing he was then taught Tai Chi Chuan, Aikido, and Yoga. Fact. When Master Chia was in his early 20s, he met another master and studied the Shaolin method of internal power. He learned the closely guarded secret of the internal organs, glands, tendons, and bone marrow. Fact. To understand the mechanisms behind healing energy better, Master Chia studied Western anatomy and medical science for two years before he started teaching others the art of self-mastery. Fact. Master Chia moved to New York and opened the first Universal Healing Tao Center in 1979. Fact. In 1994, Master Chia moved back to Thailand where he began construction of Tao Garden the Universal Healing Tao Training Center in Chiang Mai. Fact. Since then, Master Chia has taught tens of thousands of students throughout the world. He has trained and certified over 5,000 instructors and practitioners. Fact. Master Chia is a warm, friendly, and helpful man who views himself primarily as a teacher. Today's show is about an amazing man. He's an internationally renowned teacher of medical Qigong, the creator of a wellness system called Universal Healing Tao, and the director of the famous Tao Garden Natural Health Resort in Thailand. Master Chia, can you explain to our listeners what Qigong is? We call Qigong is the breath, the work of breath. So that's why, um, we can, we, if we don't eat, we maybe can last one week, two week, three weeks, some people can last longer. If we don't drink water, we maybe last two, three days. If we don't breathe, we only last a few minutes and not finish. So you can see breathing from all the traditional in the world. And the Chinese are so expert in the Qigong. Qigong means qi mean energy, life force. It comes from breath. Well, wait a minute, what does gong mean? Gong means practice. Oh, so it's 
So it's like energy work. Energy work, or we call breath work. Got it. Okay. So that's why breath, if you're breathing right, is so important in your life. Most people, they're breathing not right, so they live half of their life. Because as we say that if you don't breathe, three, four, five minutes, we finish. Ten minutes, our brain die, and the rest stop. So ten minutes is very, yeah. <laughs> it's very fast. Okay, but if we don't breathe right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna get sick, very, very, right. very sick. So that's why breathing, we can. Breathing is the breath of life, and the whole breathing in the Tao we're talking about how the diaphragm move. So we call the full diaphragm of work. So that by the qigong, you need certain kind of movement to activate the pelvic diaphragm. It's the flow. And the thoracic diaphragm, that is in the chest. And the, the throat diaphragm, and the brain diaphragm. And we don't know this, 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 last, uh, this uh, diaphragm, we don't work with that. Because this diaphragm have to activate in order to draw force. Baby have them all. Because baby have the instinct to survive. So the first thing we do when we're born, and we get spent first, you know. When we're born, you know, uh, we cry, but everybody happy. Yeah. <laughs> See? So, so in a moment of our first life, we need to take a first breath. So the doctor will put you up, upside down, hit you until you cry. You see? And when you cry, now you take the first breath. And this breathing go on until we finish the last breath. So in the Tao of Qigong, how can I make my breath right? And how can I use this breath to heal me? How can it make my breath to live longer, healthier, and happier? And that's what Qigong has. You know, um, with, as a woman, if I watch a baby breathing, I mean a little baby, they don't breathe into the chest. Yes. They breathe into the belly. Their diaphragm, the thoracic diaphragm, is so relaxed. Mm -hmm. When they breathe in, the belly comes up. Yeah, but we never, uh, if we can observe a little bit, you can see the pubic diaphragm working. Cranial, if the baby is born, you put the hand on the cranial, the cranial actually is like this, breathing. And that's the cranial diaphragm. Ah, yeah. And the diaphragm, when we have it in the baby, and when we grow up, it's stuck, or we don't know, and we don't practice, so when you need a qigong practice, because the pubic diaphragm we call perineum power, it actually is connecting with the cranial diaphragm because this is the, everything of us uh, uh, set, setting on this pubic diaphragm because it's a major, major part of the floor. That's the floor that we step on. There's a wider perineum. And all the diaphragm, so this perineum are so much involved with grounding. And the diaphragm here also are set on the per, uh, perineum power, or we call perineum uh, pubic diaphragm. And pubic diaphragm activate, the cranial diaphragm, diaphragm activate, and now we can breathe into this brain breathing. Wow, okay then. Now you teach Taoist Qigong. What is, oh, wait, first of all, is Taoism a religion? Um, the original is uh, the history back to 6,000 years. That time, in the Tao said, we don't know any anything about religious. Okay. We only know nature, universe, and human. And so, and they started to, but when they started to, when the sun set, you calm, you quiet, and you can go to sleep right away. And sometimes they have to be quiet. You know, all the time they have to be very quiet without animal coming looking for you. you know? Right. <laughs> so you have to be very calm and relaxed. And maybe that's the time they started to get in touch with when they come and relax and go into a meditation. And they discover an internal work. So all the Tao practice is the Tao mean back to the nature. You can have you can have a tiny little house in a big, 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 vast, vast nature. But we cannot go away from this nature. So that's why the Tao said back to Tao mean the way of back to the nature. So wait a minute, then it's not a religion, it's a philosophy of life. It's the philosophy of life, how to go back to our own original source, our root, and our 
The one day support, the earth support, the season support, the planetary support us. And that is just, that is we call the universe or the nature. And you have to back to the nature. We cannot, we cannot cut off all this life force because we need this, all this earth support, season support, and the planetary support. We cannot cut them off. All right, so it sounds more like science than uh, than religion to me. So let, let our listeners want to hear about you, okay? So I'm going to ask you a question about your history. Is it true that you learned to meditate from Buddhist monks when you were six years old? And if that's true, what was that like for a small boy? You know, in, in Thailand, they have, they call a young monk. They call a young, a young monk or a chai monk. They call na. Okay, that means uh, uh, in the in the holiday, the parents will send these people and the children to the temple. Okay. But I'm not Buddhism, but I see them because they will they shave their head and they're walking around the village. And this one is going to be 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 go to the temple maybe one week or one month, you know. So they uh, learn how to meditate when they're young. And I really like, and I see them, actually see them meditate, and they say, oh, I like to learn that. But my parents come from Christian family, oh. so we don't have that. But they say, I like that. So sometimes I just see them sitting, and I just sit with them, and something like that. And um, so I learn how to quiet my mind. It's a, a young man is very difficult, but when you have people that do together, you, sure. you follow and do it. Children follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you were still quite young, Master Lu taught you about martial arts. Which ones did you learn, and do you think this was good training for a young person? Now, martial arts, actually they have a study in England. They said if a children have some kind of discipline of training, their life success is way different from the people that know training of like martial art, mm -hmm. like the uh, meditation, like the how to internal work. And they discover now that these people have much, much more uh, success in their life. Like the Steve, Steve Jobs, all his in early life spent with all these kind of, of meditation and all these kind of things. He spent a lot of time in this thing, okay? And he always have a connection with the higher force, or we call the creation power. That's why he has so many creative mind for that. Okay. Makes sense to me. So martial arts is a way to discipline ourselves. Which ones did you learn when you were younger? I, I learned in Thailand there is always a Thai boxing. Okay. And in Thailand I learned a simple uh, or very traditional uh, Tai Chi. We call the young style Tai Chi, who is the 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 father of, I mean, the descendant of the young Thai, he came to Thailand because China and Thailand are very, very close. So he came to Thailand, in Hong Kong, he's in Hong Kong because he escaped from China at that time. And Ooh. he came to Thailand and teach us. So I learned from that also. Wow. And um, so the, the, the martial art, uh, the, the, the Tai Chi is a martial art, but the way we learn now is just for solo movement, for breathing, for health, for calm the mind. And, um, but actually it's a very deadly martial art also. Okay, which I also have chance to see these people there. They, they have that kind of power and learn some from them. Oh, I think our listeners would probably like to hear more about that, but we'll have to talk about martial arts on a different show. Uh, now, as a young man, when you met Taoist Master Yi Yun, am I saying that right? Uh, how did that change things for you? Uh, when I when I when I went to China, to Hong Kong to study my elementary school, that is Chinese and English, and um. I have chance to meet my master because this I always read the Kung Fu novel and all kind of this kind of uh, a story and everything and I dreaming what is that real you know and one day I met my senior classmate uh, and he actually from that he took me to the Tao master and actually we all the same Thai student 
in Hong Kong. We all sit together in that time, said we like to see, we want all oh, this is a, just a, a, a story, a novel, and not real. And after that, uh, the senior classmate on the side, he said, you want to read, feel real cheap? And uh, I can take you. So we make appointment tomorrow, 10 o'clock. And it happened 10 o'clock, I'm the only person there. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and we wait until 11 o'clock, nobody come. And from that time, he bring me to the see my master. And my master said, oh, oh where the other seven people that said want to come? You only person? I said, yeah. I said, I like this fascinating thing about the energy and chi and all these kind of extra thing, uh, extraordinary thing. He said, yeah, I can show you and make you feel chi. And that's how we're beginning from that. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish all young people had that uh, opportunity. Now, I know there were at least two more masters that you trained with. Um, can you tell us how it was you developed the Universal Healing Tao system and why did you do this? This is a lot of work. Um, my, my main master is called Yi, mean one cloud hermit, one cloud, okay? So he passing me a nine formula of practice. So we have a first level, and first level until the nine level, we call from a physical organ, body, how we transform this organ and body energy, how we transform sexual energy, all this kind of energy, until how we transform and feed and educating, feed and grow our soul and educating our soul. And how can we go back to the source, become part one, oneness with the universe and become part of the universe. And that is a whole, whole practice from first level to nine level. Just so from a very simple, very simple about how your heart, how your kidney, how your liver feel like, all this level, and how this energy, and how they combine together, fusion together, and how to separate the water and fire to become another energy, and how we make it cheap, because if we believe the soul, my master told me that the soul and spirit is an intelligent energy. And uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein said, E equal mc squared means energy comes from material, and that's what exactly what the Tao talk about. You need physical to producing energy, mass, and c squared, you're producing chi. And later on, he said, energy cannot destroy, only transform. And that's what the whole Tao practice transform the energy, from one energy to another energy. And that's the, alchemy. Yeah. But it's a very simple alchemy, but we make it so mysterious, so mysterious. Well, you made, it easy. Last, you made it easy for us. And the last part is that the whole universe covered with energy, and that's all to it. So my master said the whole universe is energy, and our soul is with energy. So if you believe that, if you're working with energy, you're never wrong. Because energy is everything. Energy, our soul space is energy, the whole universe, in the end, everything turned to energy. So, but this big, vast energy in this universe, the violet light energy, okay, cover the whole universe, they have intelligence. And this is what the West make me understand. This big, vast, violet light, they have interconnecting like our brain. And they said, the last, last information that they said, they have intelligence. So that all the energy and they have intelligence. And that is our part of our soul and spirit. They are energy and they have intelligence. Beautiful. And if but in the beginning we inherit them in our physical, it's in a baby form. And our job here is to raise them. How you raise them? Chi, energy, life force. Because they are energy. You only can feed them with energy. You cannot feed them with a big steak. But our digestive system can take a, spit, a steak and turn to energy for us. So we have digestion, absorption, elimination. So all these things help us transform energy. And we upgrade the energy and now we can feed to the baby. It's just like a milk. You cannot feed a baby with, with a steak. You have to feed them with milk. So the soul spirit is energy, so the only can you can do them is feed them with energy. 
but our physical can transform energy and we can learn how to transform and upgrade the energy to feed our soul and spirit. So you make this sound very easy and I guess I'm I'm a little bit curious. These used to be secrets for the emperor and his sages. Why did you decide to share this, you know, and call it Universal Healing Tao? The whole world can can learn about this. The whole key is the more I learn about the Western science and the Western anatomy, the more I understand now because they are very science. They fit perfect with it. The inner alchemy is exactly is E equal MC squared. And that is so simple formula. You have a material, you have a fight, you start an energy. That's it. And energy is everything. <laughs> so the energy, like our mobile telephone, they have energy. And energy can turn to image, can turn to sound, can turn to wave, can turn to anything. And you can program your telephone. You can program them. Uh, because they have uh, intelligence. They say we call artificial intelligence. But human soul and spirit is a real intelligence, not artificial intelligence. And that's how we are. Well, we're very grateful to have you bringing this information to us. If there was one piece of advice that you could give Western men and women to make their life healthier and happier. The first thing we say, you have to learn how to cultivate your breath, our chi work. And it's breath creating more chi. Okay, so if you have more chi and you find a balancing of your energy, you have a better emotional and you're more happy and you have happier life and your healthy body, and that's what we are. So, emotional balance, energy balance, and we get healthier. But we don't know what to do with our life. We spend so in the Tao said. A smart people know how to take care of their health. A very intelligent person invests in their health. But a stupid, you know, <laughs> uh, ignorant person, they ignore their health. A very ignorant person, they are overdraw their, their, their health. They overspend their energy. Ah, bad health. bank account. So it sounds to me like Master Chia's advice to all of us uh, is take care of your health first. Yes. Thank you, sir. See you guys next week. We don't know what to do with our life. We spend, so in the Tao say, a smart people know how to take care of their health. A very intelligent person invests in their health. But a stupid, you know, <laughs> uh, ignorant person, they ignore their health. A very ignorant person, they are overdraw their, their, their health. They overspend their energy. Ah, their bad health. bank account. So it sounds to me like Master Chia's advice to all of us uh, is take care of your health first. Yes. Thank you, sir. See you guys next week.